For the storms can be raging, but our God knows how to calm the rage of sea yes, by does. just speaking one word. He said, peace. Hallelujah. And I thank God that same peace that he had, he has given unto us. So at this time, we, we're going to present to some and introduce to others as we stand up on our feet tonight. Let's shout hallelujah as Pastor Paul D. King come tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Amen. 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 So God, be for the things that he has done. Amen. Isn't he wonderful? Praise God. He's a mighty good God and he's worthy to be praised. It is a joy. Amen. To be found tonight in the house of God on a Friday night. Amen. Don't got no mind to get drunk, get high. And amen. Do the things we want you to do. Come on here. Amen. Although we say we've always been saved, thank God we ain't always sought to live clean lives. And I mean, devoted unto God. To God be the glory for the things he has done. He has given us the victory through his son Jesus. And we're just excited to let men and women know that if he can do it for us, because he did, amen, he can also do it for you. Praise God. Thank God. And so while we're in his presence, we thank God for you that's in internet land and you that's in the room tonight. We're going to acknowledge him as we go to the throne of grace. Father, we again thank you and praise you for this service thus far. And all that our ears have heard concerning you. You are worthy to be magnified and exalted. The praises that are due you, you're worthy of them all. Have your way, O oh God, even within this part of the service as your word go forward. It is the interest of your word that gives light. It gives understanding. It shows men and women the way of salvation. It encourages our hearts and our minds. It causes us to be all what you called us to be. And it gives us hope. Yes, Lord, even in dark times trying times that so many are facing, it is your word that causes us to live, move and have our being. So on tonight, send it forward. Lord, into that life, into that issue that men and women are leaning and looking to you to resolve. You're the answer to this nation's ill. You're the answer to every man, woman, boy and girl problem. It is you we come to exalt. It is you we come to magnify. Yes, even in times like these, that your name will be glorified. These things we pray and ask in Jesus' name. And all of God's people shouted hallelujah. 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 To God be the glory. Yes, yes, yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Turn on in my soul. He's wonderful. And he's worthy to be praised. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We thank God for you tonight that press your way out. Amen. To be within this service, God knows how. Amen. To keep blessing his people. And don't you ever forget. And don't you ever, amen, be in such a way that you're not mindful that the efforts that you make, the eyes of the Lord is upon you. Amen. Look here. It, for too long, people have sought to serve the Lord. Amen. Wondering, I don't want to do this. I don't want to make him upset. I don't want to do that. Look at here. Amen. He not only looked to see the evil, but he looked to see good too. Amen. I mean, my God, you be free in your mind and you be free in your spirit. Amen. God is not against his people. Amen. He longs for his people to be where he would have them to be. He longs for men and women to come unto them, unto him, just as they are. He longs, amen, no matter where you're at, in the spiritual realm, for you to come higher. Amen. He won't throw the towel in if you don't throw the towel in. Amen. He did promise us, I'll be with you as long as you're with me. I mean, if you want me, I definitely want you. Amen. I mean, at the end of the day, God is a good God. And he's worthy to be praised right in the face of all what we face, man. I mean, he's a good God in the pandemic. All right. Amen. Yeah. Where everybody seems like they're running with their head cut off like a chicken. God is a good God. Amen. In the midst of it all, in the midst of the adversity that you may be facing, in the midst of the turmoil I may face, whatever man is going through, oh, if he can look beyond it. 
or come into a hearing of who God is. I mean, if it means you got to wait, I mean, wait on the Lord to manifest and show forth his power. I'm going to wait knowing he's going to do it then. I'm not going to wait with no long spirit. I'm not going to wait with no tears coming down my face. Amen. Uh -uh. We drying them eyes and we're going to put a smile on. Praise the Lord. And let the Lord know I heard like Gideon did. Now, hold wait now. We know we know what you can do. We know what you've done. Amen. But the situation is in dire need of you. Amen. And just knowing you don't sleep or slumber, you're not a God that cannot hear or see. Lord, we long to see you move. Amen. And what God is doing in times like these, this move that he's going to manifest his power like never before. There is an awakening and enlightenment that's taking place in every believer's life. Amen. That's men and women that even on the outside, not knowing them yet, he's preparing hearts. Yes, he is. And, and put the answer down within men and women. And he's getting his army together. Amen. Yes, that one that seemed like has been inactive for long duration. Amen. That I wanted out of the way God is moving by his spirit and getting a people together that's going to let him have his way. Amen. That he can show off his power and let men and women know he is God. Not these simple Simons. Amen. And then God is God. Not the man with the collar. God is God. And beside him there is no other. Amen. Too many broken hearts that need to be healed. Come on here. Too many in captivity that need to let that need to be free. Take the time. Oh, bless his name. There's a lot going on, amen. But God is on the throne watching it. Amen. And he and look, I love this because he's not full of anxiety. He's not on Prozac. He's not nervous. Amen. He don't need no help. He's God all by himself. Thank God, and he will show up and show out. Amen. In behalf of his people. So we come to let you know if you're saved, he loves you. We come to let you know if you're not saved, he loves you. Amen. Because God is love. How do you like that? Come on, give him a great big hand praise. Oh, Lord, bless the Lord. I feel his present. Amen. In the room, praise the Lord tonight. Thank God for each of you. Praise the Lord. Thank God for uh, all of you tonight that's here. We're going to go directly into the word of the Lord. We have a word from the Lord. Amen. To speak into your hearts tonight. Amen. Of the hearer. Praise God. I mean, who's ever ears fall upon this. This is a timely word. Amen. For us all. Thank God. Amen. Praise God. It's nothing like him manifesting himself and speaking into your life. I, and I mean, when he do, you just go ahead on, sister. You go ahead on, brother, and be all that God would have you to be. Because when God speaks, it counsels out whatever was in the past. When God manifests himself to you, when he say, look at here, you're my son, and I'm calling you for this mission, and this is what you shall do. Amen. I mean, it counsels out all of your ability. I mean, all of your past failures, weaknesses, mistakes, and all of that. Amen. I mean, when he choose you, he see you as he see you. Amen. And it means so much for you to fall in line as quick as you can. Amen. To realize, amen, because he's chosen you for such a time as this. You have all that you need. Praise God. You have all that you need. So tonight we come to encourage your heart. And we just got two words to say to you tonight, but we pray it reverberated the sanctum of your soul. Amen. And that it just be all in your mind. And it is these words. He promised is what we're going tonight. Amen. He promised. And that he I'm talking about is God. Thank God. Not that man, not that woman. Not your son, not your daughter. Amen. Not your wife, not that one that you call your wife or your husband. I said God promised. See, all that other stuff can come from people, amen, and they don't have the power or the wherewithal to keep their promise, especially if God has not given them the same, do or be who they say they are, amen. And that's why a lot of disappointments and failures uh, uh, take place, or and there's a lot of broken hearts because people build a trust and put all in on that that cannot deliver. 
Amen. And if it's ever been a time for us as the preachers to cry loud and lift up our voice and the saints of God to be witnesses in the earth and let men and women know. We got to let them know after all and in all of what's taking place, there's no need to be down because God ain't never did no wrong to nobody. He's never broke a promise. He's never said something that he had not done. I mean, and he won't even grieve out anything he's not able to do. And so with that being the case, amen, I believe men and women should be instructed, encouraged, guided, and enlightened to put all in in him. I mean, put all your trust, put all your confidence. I mean, put everything you got in him. And I found out that when you live a life like that and you sojourn, he heals you, he delivers you, he strengthens you, he encourages you, amen, to be all what he has called you to be. So on tonight, we want to start some reading out tonight in Hebrew chapter 13. If you don't mind, Sister Tony, I want you to get Hebrew chapter 13. Oh, bless him. Hebrew chapter 13 mm -hmm, and 4. Uh, five, 4 and 5 is where we're going. Hebrew chapter 13, 4 and 5 is going to be our foundation starting point tonight. Remember these words, he promised. Yes. If you have your Bibles, say amen. amen. Read, what did the Bible say? Marriage is honorable in all, mm -hmm. and the bed undefiled. Yes. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. All right, uh, uh huh. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Yes. And be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee right. nor forsake thee. So here it is, amen. The letter that was penned to the uh, the church, the Hebrew church, uh, the epistles are written to God's people, those that have come to taste the Lord to see how good he is, that have come to know him in the department of their sins that's been delivered, amen, from the Pharaohs, amen, and brought out of the world, brought out of the Egypt. Is that all right? He was encouraging them and writing them because they was well taught and learned. As they were on their journey and sojourning, amen, the Lord moved upon Apostle Paul in this time and hour that the saints were going, amen, and the Lord had a word to encourage all, amen, that would hear the letter. I mean, I'm sure they thought in their day the letter was for them, but we found out as we, they didn't know, but we found out as they died off and here we are, the letter is also for us. Amen. Because when God speak, praise the Lord, because the dimension that he is, is never specific to just that, just that realm. Amen. There's realms in God. And when Paul was writing this, amen, this chapter, and he was here pinning the ladder to the church. Oh, what a, what a brother we have in him that could be going through what he was going through and still had, amen, the people of God on his mind. I mean, you know, oftentimes we look at the scripture and we read it, amen, and we find, and which we should, and we draw from it in the days of our trouble, conflict, and adversity. Not realizing many times when you read it, amen, just like the Psalms, just like the episodes in the Old Testament, these things was, these scriptures was birth, amen, in adversity, amen, while men, amen, was on lockdown, while they were steering at prison doors, amen, where they were sitting in there with stripes in their back, praise God, being whipped and beat all for just loving God. Obeying God and speaking what thus saith the Lord. Somebody had a mind to look beyond their personal struggle, their pain, and their dilemma, and amen, and be mindful of God that God could send a word and speak through them directly into the lives of the people that stood in need. And in doing so, amen, we find out, and I'm telling people as you grow, as you develop, when God, amen, can 
can use you to help somebody else, you find yourself getting strength too. Amen. Look at here, my God, if people will tell the truth, amen. Some of the greatest anointings that comes on us as teachers and preachers is when you are going through the tortures of, of fire, hell, and brimstone. Amen. When you, your own stuff is fighting the rumors, my God, might be in your house with your children. Amen. In your own arena, God got way. When you can look beyond all of that and he can speak into your life to be a blessing to someone somebody else. It sounds like the example that he does with that is very resembled to Jesus. You remember him being on the cross? You remember him going through judgment hall, the judgment hall? Amen. I mean being whipped all night long for you and me while we were in our sins when we weren't holy and we didn't know God. I mean he, oh my God, he gave his back to be smitten and to be striped. Amen. But while he was doing that, he looked beyond his personal pain yes. and saw you and I need. And I understand that more and more as I've grown and going, God, as Jesus was going about his way and the disciples had a desire for him or concern. Look, you need to eat. He said, y'all know not my meat. My meat is to do the will of the Father. That is what gives me strength. And I found out for the believer, it's so in all of our lives. It's nothing about like getting caught up in what he would have you to be, what he wants you to do in the midst of what you're going through to take your mind off of that and this present. And as you look to him, he works it all out. I mean, he overcomes you with a blessing that you don't have room to receive. And although, amen, sometimes your situation seems to be not changed. But after he get with the, done with your spirit, it seems like everything's been changed. Amen. So I found out one thing is going through in God. As he speak, amen, it is like he spoke. And we should receive it, praise the Lord. Because God, many times, is not into changing so much at the present time. Your dilemma, he just want to take that situation and do some change in you. How about that? Amen. All right, God, and when we come through that lesson of that learning, then we find out God would rise up and your enemies will be scattered seven different ways. Somebody say hallelujah. So when we're looking at this tonight, Apostle Paul was writing to the church and he touched on that verse and he said, look here, as he, uh, 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 for he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Amen. This is something God said all back way in the te Old Testament, Testament times. And his word has always been true. And it's for you and I to realize this no matter what we face, whether it be adversity, adversity situation, sickness, pearls, I mean, evil, hatred, whatever you can face. If you can hang it in, I don't care how the devil want to make you feel God is not with you. God don't see you. He's not your help. He promised that he would never leave thee nor forsake you. Amen. And many times, although it don't look good, or it might not look good after 2020 in, in the natural mind, that's why we got to learn how to elevate in the spiritual mind. Don't look out of your eyes. Look out the eyes of God. Amen. We got to get on that realm because there's a plan that God has for each one of our lives. There's a journey that each one of us have to take. Amen. I got to walk mine. You got to walk yours. I'm in here to encourage you and to fortify you with the knowledge and information, being a vessel that God can speak through to help you get down your journey. Amen. And God helps me get down my journey. Somebody say amen. And we all encourage us one to the other. Help us if that's all right. One to the other. We're not here to judge the matter. Amen. We're not here to condemn you along the way. We're just here to let you know he promised tonight. And so when we look at this tonight, we're looking at this scripture. I want to touch something here. Because, I mean, the Lord laid something in my life that really shook me loose some years ago. Amen. Sister Tony touched a little bit on that verse in verse 4. Amen. What the church needs to realize when you get born again and when you come to God. Amen. What you have just come into is a covenant relationship. There is a uniting. There is a marriage. There is a relationship that has taken place. And one thing about this, when you realize you begin to grow, that this thing we call salvation. That this 
this way of holiness that we find out you, neither I, came up with. When we understand the very architect, the very author, amen, the creator that started all this, that knows all about it, amen, when we begin to hum in and hem in on it, a lot of things, amen, that we once thought was or how we saw, we start realizing it, that don't go with what God has always done, amen. And when we look at that, I'm just going to touch this tonight. It said marriage is honorable in all, in the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. I I want to touch this tonight because see God gave me some weeks ago to start to begin to share some things with the body of Christ that we're to be known for exhibiting who he is amen too long the church I went always trying to be judge jury and inspector you would have thought that we learned from the Bible not to do such things because we saw the Pharisees and the Sadducees try to draw lines amen and pull out amen that judgment stick in that condemning pole. Amen. But we found out God didn't come in the person of Jesus to do none of that. And what we find out when you look at what Paul, the apostle wrote, he said, whoremongers and adulterers, God would judge. You don't have to worry about getting involved in that because you need to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. But since he did say what he said, marriage is honorable. Amen. I believe what we're, what we're coming into now, if we can connect this tonight by the inspiration of the Spirit of God. What is demanding in this hour is relationship. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Relationship is important. Amen. Being in that personal relationship, being in that, uh, that union with God through his son Jesus, it means everything. That if you're not in the union, if you're not in that relationship and you try to mimic it or you try to be something that you're not, you're not going to have success. But if you are in Christ, or if you are in this union, amen, that he described in John the 15th chapter, amen, I mean, if we're connected to him, and we're in that union, then what happens, all of what we desire to be, you don't have to worry about it, it just comes from you. I mean, oftentimes, I think about what's taking place, and sometimes those that sit on the side that the enemy used to try to throw a lot of stuff at the body of Christ and because there is a lot of failures watch this in what we call marriages but what this the what I love about amen the evangelist amen Irene Murray amen one of the mothers of Zion begin to speak into my life to help me with some things and sometimes we just got to be straight out honest and very transparent about your walk because one thing about this don't nobody know your life like you God and the devil and Lord knows if you've ever been hit to something that ain't been nothing but a bunch of chaos, don't nobody know like you and that person, God and the devil. And what I'm getting at, amen, is that we're in the hour that people need clarity, amen, that they can know how to hold to the promises of God and don't let them go for nobody. Make no difference, amen, how people try to pressure you. You just got to know in whom you believe and know who you Sir, praise God, because when you get in God, you don't see like everybody else. When you start looking out of his eyes, he gives you clarity and then give you strength to do his will. And so when we're going with this, you look at this, the marriage, the ceremony, the relationship, the uniting that God does with his people. And you think about marriage and you know what they talk about all the failed marriages and God has always gave me to be settled to the point. Amen. A lot of things people call Oh, what's failed is not what they say it is. Amen. Just because you say something don't mean God says that's what it is. Just because you call yourself, amen, a teacher, a preacher, that don't mean God look at you like that. Just because you take a title on and you say whatever before God and he can give you license. If God is not in that thing, if God has not called you to be what you say you are, amen, praise God, you're not going to have success. 
And so what I'm finding out, we just got to get wrapped up, tangled up, and tied up with God. Amen. And don't be entangled with the yoke of bondage, but be free from all the darkness. Be free, amen, in your mind from all the custom and, 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 and traditional teaching. And walk in the light as the light comes. And realize, though, amen, you face what you face because you're connected to Father God. You're connected to the husband man because you know in whom you have believed in. God will always bring you through and bring you out. Amen. Say amen. amen. So when we look at this tonight, the Bible did say what it said about he promised, he promised. And so the promise was, I never leave thee nor forsake you. Then what is this promise? Amen. Promise, amen, in the New Testament scriptures, oftentimes, amen, it symbolizes the, uh, the sense of God designed to visit his people. In Old Testament time, he gave promises that the king was to come, what he was going to do. Everything he spoke of, I mean, Israel, his son, amen, they grab hope to hope thou in it and cleave unto it that it will come to pass. And since God, amen, who is love, amen, who is, there's none like him. He's the true and uh, the true God, the only God, amen. We found out no matter how long they stripped it out, all his words came to pass. And I mean, my God through Israel, rebellion and the stiffness and the stubbornness sometime in sometime out he remained the same every time they messed up and they did what they did after they got through getting destroyed and whipped they found themselves coming back to God and God because he was that that they could reunite to see when you got the real thing you got something to be reconciled back to see some of this stuff folks call in marriages amen he never had nothing nothing from the beginning and there's never been no marriage. I've learned and God gave me a new word for it. It's just a bunch of entanglements. Amen. At the end of the day, it was a mess from the beginning, a mess in the middle, and a mess at the end. And what I'm finding out about God, when you get the real thing, it ain't always, it, ain't, it don't start out no mess. Amen. I mean, mess can try to come in there, but if something come up in something good, amen, because you got the real thing, I mean, you coming through that thing, God, amen, is going to get the glory but we're in the time and hour. Amen. We got to look at who promises that we're standing upon. Amen. In such a way that we can make sure we got a sure foundation and that I, 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 that we don't be let down because everything else is like sinking sand. If you build up on anything other than God, amen, or in God, anything that God didn't put together, that thing going to be used against you to wipe your own out of here. So we're saying in this hour that we in, it's time to be ye saved and look unto him all ye ends of the earth. And so when Paul was saying this, he was saying something. He said, look here. He promised, amen, in such a way. He said these words. He will not leave you. He will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Amen. You got to realize, amen, you're in a covenant relationship with God. Amen. And it, not, it wasn't nothing that came out your mouth. It's what came out of his mouth. You're in a covenant relationship with him. And as long as you seek to stay with him, he'll stay with you. The other side of the coin, if you seek to leave him, I've got to let you know, he will let you go, amen, and come up on somebody else if you don't watch yourself. So we encourage men and women, you stay with God because I'm telling you, there's a making in what you're going through. Me and my son, I was talking to my middle child, and we were discussing some things, amen. One thing about God, and one thing about life, today, you know today is today. You don't know what tomorrow's hold, or you don't know what next month that there'll be, or next year, the following years. You just got to strive to be the best you are today. None of us never knew, amen. None of, none of us never knew it's really time in such an hour that the saints, that we that enlightenment, we have the enlightened people that we can shift their eyes to God. Because one thing about we find out in this life, as I sit here tonight, amen, being the age I am, I ain't always been this age. I did not know the things, amen, that the Lord had in store that I've come to realize. And because of that, amen, I couldn't even fathom it. But what I found out, amen, when you see 
seeking success and you're seeking to please God. You're seeking to be all. You just got to bury yourself in the mission. You got to get caught up in the process. You got to get caught up in such a way, amen, that say, look, Lord, I'm not going to let this shake me. I'm going to hold on to what you said because what you said I rather believe because you're not a man that you should lie. How, what do you mean, preacher? I mean, look at here. If you're facing pain, if you're facing sickness, if you're facing things that you know you don't have no power to do yourself, you reach back and grab the things that you come to know about God and trust God to see you through this thing because it's not for it to end that way. Amen. You got to know what points you at you in your life. Amen. It's not going to end like that. You getting through this. You coming out of it. Amen. That thing got to turn around. You just got to learn how to hang on to every promise he's given you. As a child of God, we got to know who we are. That when the enemy comes in like a flood and you can't sit there and think God's not there. What's going on in too long because we've been babies and no development. As soon as problems come, amen, we run down. Watch this. I'm not knocking prayer. You got to know how to use prayer though. Amen. You don't just want to be praying and don't believe because that don't go no higher than your ceiling. But when you pray, God give you strength to get up off your knees and begin to praise him before you see a breakthrough in the manifestation of what you pray. And so what I'm getting at, amen, is time in such a way for us to believe what we pray as we hold into these precious promises that you can praise them in the storm, praise them in the valley, praise them on the mountaintop. Give God the glory. Don't never get too high. Don't never get too low. Even when you get high, you realize I'm up here because God put me here. Even when you're walking through the valley, you realize, no, I walk through the valley. I'm not going to fear. I realize the Lord is with me. So what I'm finding out as we travel on through and we grow, because he promised never to leave me nor forsake me, that when the enemy comes in, I can talk to him. That's what I love about this thing. You know, you're looking at a pastor, sir. That came up through the ranks, amen. Pastor Dallas J. King, my father. I heard and had to sit in the congregation like everybody else. I came to church, amen. The enemy tempted me at all points like he did everybody else. I wasn't always, and I didn't have, even though he was my father, I wasn't up in his face. Hey, Dad, what about this? What about that? No, -uh. I heard that word. I went in there and shut my door. I read my Bible. I prayed and I said, Look, Lord, you're going to help me here. Amen. I got things going on that I know you know. Ain't nobody but me knowing this devil is doing and the Lord gives you how to fight gives you how to be, gives you how to pull down, cast down amen in such a way that I would hear what he would speak, I would hear what God would say and say look Lord if that be the case then I'm going to take what you've given me and I'm going to fight the good fight of faith, I didn't have to worry about it. a lot of times when people around they think because of so and so this and that, that you got special access then you supposed to look at it, this thing don't work like that Amen. It don't work about what lineage you is, who your daddy, who your mommy is. You got to long for God. You got to want to stay with God. You got to not want the things that the world had to offer when you come to find out it was nothing. Amen. You got to have your own testimony. I couldn't go off Dallas King. I had to go off. I had to get my own testimony. I had to know the Lord can keep me. You got to know the Lord can keep you. That's why we teach the way we teach. Amen. You got to hold to his promises. It's not what the bishop said. It's his promise. It's not, oh my God. That wasn't Abraham's promise. God gave that promise. He gave that promise. That's God promise. And anybody that holds to the promises of God, amen, I mean they will be everything God has called them to be. When we're talking about this, amen, now that we are in God, now us that are saved. Amen. That are in God. We on a journey. Everybody's on this road and we're pressing to be all what God would have us to be. And what I found out in life, there's two roads you can be on. The wrong road and the right road. When you're on the right road, amen, you find yourself holding to the promises that God speak on the wrong road. Amen. Look at here. Getting, get, getting disappointed and all the, all, all, bumping your head all the time. That's dangerous to do because on that road, the enemy 
enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Amen. And if you don't get off that road, there's a perishing at the end. Amen. But when you get on the hallelujah side, or you get in Christ, or he saved you, and now you're on your way, my God, to possess the land and be all what God would have you to be. That's the right road. And I got news for you. There are going to be tribulations. There are going to be turbulence. There are going to be your Euroclodons. There are going to be strong winds. But you keep hoping thou in God and stand flat put upon his promises. Because as it's all taking place, he's making you. Amen. Yes, it's a good way to look at it. God is making you. Amen. When they're being evil and you know you can shoot back off because they're thinking the smooth taste. Amen. They don't let the smooth taste fool you because we ain't always been saved. So sometimes you come over here, you got to endure, take some things. And while you're doing it, amen, you ain't got to be all down about it. You should rejoice because you didn't even have that ability before Christ came. And while you doing it, amen, like we were talking the other night, you take them lemons and make some lemonade. And I mean, put a smile on your face and let God be pleased with everything you do. And because you hold to the promises, he's going to make you. And so when I'm bringing out right now, amen, the marriage for us as believers, it goes beyond an earthly covenant. Amen. Because I mean, it, 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 what, what man does, amen, he, he's, he's so carnal and natural that he missed the spiritual. And then we teach people things uh, in the in the person of God that God is not saying. Amen. And man makes this thing and think he can uh, describe or define or declare, amen, what marriage is. Uh, think he can describe and declare. I mean, to the point, no wonder God years ago started delivering me from Webster. And God gave me, look, uh uh, son, I can't, I can't give you the deep things of God. I can't give you understanding using Webster Dictionary. Webster wasn't one that I called. He's a secular man. He's a natural man. He's just intelligent. Amen. These words that's in this book have a spiritual understanding. And you can't just be so heavy into the dictionaries that everybody see it like Webster say, Marion say. But you got to go if you want to have understanding, get in this book. Amen. And come to realize what God calls salvation, what God calls deliverance, and what God types it as marriage in such a way when you do. Amen. You'll find yourself when you connect it to him. And when you realize he with you, you realize you got everything you need. Amen. In the midst of what you go through, that's why the teaching in the Bible teaches us when God called 12 men and they walk with him and they learn, my God, that he was able to meet every need. They learned how to do everything that he said. That, and even you know, while they was learning, they didn't have no attitude. They didn't have, they didn't have all this stuff we make ourselves get comfortable with with people. Amen. Putting ourselves through all these changes and doing this and not have, they weren't like that now. Amen. They was learning about the Lord because it was a real union. It was something, amen, that was put together by God. God gave them love. He had love for them. He gave it to them and they walked with him in such a way. Amen that they continue with him in his temptations. Amen. Oh yeah, we can look at the Bible, although they did what they did at the end, but because they had the real thing. Because he is the real thing. I mean, look how it all came back together. And this is what I'm saying, praise the Lord. You got to take this word and let it be personal in your life so you can see what God is in, so you can be in God. So you can see what God, oh come on here tonight. Because don't nobody know like you know you in your personal relationship with God and don't nobody know like you know amen your relationships with that that's not God so at the end of the day I'm just here to give you some knowledge and some information you stay in your lane tell folks to stay out of your lane and you get that thing right with God and don't worry about nobody looking on the left looking at the right you just obey God how about that because at the end of the day let God judge the whoremongers and the adulterers because there's a lot of folks that think they know, don't know. But you go on in God, amen, in your life will be evident because what God don't do, he don't bless nobody that's in Rome. What God don't do, don't let that one think he shall receive anything of the Lord that doubt him. Don't let that one think he will inherit anything of the kingdom of God. If he's this, if he's that. But my God, when you got folks inheriting, you better back up and recognize Last way, God, hold on here. Amen. Because if God be for anybody, he's more than the whole world against you. Somebody say amen. 
when we look at this, Sister Tony, I want you to look at something, amen, in Proverbs, the 10th chapter, as we try to put this in a, a cup tonight, pour, pour a lot in it, but we want to give you what we're going in Proverbs chapter 10. Uh, I want you to go to and read for me the 10th, the, start at the 10th verse. And I might give you the wrong chapter. Proverbs 10. Proverbs 10, 10 is the one that we spend our life as a tale or a story that is told. I want you, I, I think that's the 10th chapter. Amen. Just bear along with me real quick here because I want to bring this because this is for us all to realize something here. When you realize, uh, amen, God is in control and you in God, you learn how to go through what you go through with a whole different attitude and a different disposition. Realize that it's all come together for your making. It comes for your making. I mean, that's 90. Proverbs 90. I'm sorry. 90 and 10. Proverbs 90. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Proverbs 90. Psalms 90. I'm sorry. My eyes. This 52 thing gets you. Lord have mercy. I'm, yeah, I'm making an adjustment. Y'all heard it. Y'all heard it tonight. I was in the in here and I I mean to tell you, I wasn't doing no macho stuff. I just I was just sweeping and I was trying to put some dust in the pan. And I'm putting it down and my back locked up. My God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank God. It, 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 it's always thank God for Jesus being with us yes. in the midst of where we're going. Uh, Psalms 90. So, Psalms 90 and 10 is what I meant to say. Right. Mm -hmm. Psalms 90 and 10. Oh, bless you. The days of our years are three score years and 10. I want y'all to pay attention to this. Mm -hmm. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, mm -hmm. God bless you to live four score. Come on. Yet is their strength labor and sorrow. Uh -huh. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. So if you got it going on, you're strong and whatever you mean. Look, just keep on living because one thing about them, you don't have to fly away. Okay. Right. You don't have to fly away one way or the other. I mean, whether he come by the way of the cloud or you go by the way of the dust. I mean, the Lord unless we to get to the point to realize this thing and I see it clearly. Amen. Praise God. So a lot of people, amen, they might not be here. Amen. To just see them coming and split their hand. You just be ready when he calls your number. Amen. You don't want him to say, ooh, this day your soul is required. You want to hear well done, thou good and faithful servant. And we got to love people, amen, that's sitting on the top side of this earth. They got their nerves, amen, to call themselves, amen, trying to judge that, that they can't even judge when they need to be examining themselves. Uh, because at the end of the day, it behooves all of mankind just to be ready when he calls your number. And it's for us to realize you spend and me, you, and everybody else uh, if you get 70, if you get 80, there's the Bible saying he promised us. Amen. Look here, we spend our life. For well, all our days are passed away uh -huh. and not wrath. Yes. We spend our years as a tale that is told. Look at this. We spend our years. So if you allow me, just if you allow me with this, that means if it's a tale, it's a story. Amen. If it's a tale, if it's a story, he knows the beginning, he knows the middle, and he knows the end. Thank God. Amen. But you hear what I'm saying? He knows. He knows that. He knows the end, the middle, and the beginning. When we're finding out, when we let down and begin to teach over there in the book, amen, of Hebrew chapter 11, and we're looking at our brothers, they all have beginning, middles, and end. But the beautiful thing about it, they was on the right way with God. They was going in the right direction and they days that they encountered, they didn't know they were going to encounter it, but God did. Amen. And God was with them to help them get through their storms, get through their dark days, get through their sunny days. He was there to with them. He held them by their hand. He walked with them. He talked with them. He fought for them. Amen. What are you saying? I'm saying that same God that has called you on your journey. Amen. He has promised 
to you never to leave you nor forsake you. You got to realize, amen, instead of crying about it, why don't you praise him about it? Amen. Instead of getting on down, get up and give him the glory. See, the devil's loving this, amen, where a lot of people are refraining and abstaining from assembling and coming out, amen, because there's so much fear that are built up and they lost their spiritual passion and their spiritual pressure, amen, for the mark of the prize of the higher calling in God. And we learn how to dress it all up like we being smart and I'm thinking on all this and this and that, but I'm telling you something here. Don't be in that number. You be in that number, amen, that's sitting right there. I don't care if you're stealing bread behind the wine presser. You be in that number saying, look, Lord, wait a minute. You done did all this, said all this about me. Look, I'm sitting up here. Why am I living like this and you done did all of what you've done? Amen. Look, I want to see your glory. I want to see you do great things. I want you to come in my life, shift me, move me, and make me. Amen. I'm going to hold to your promise because you promised that you would do it and you're not a man that you should lie. Amen. God likes that. He's not He's not upset because a man talked that way to him. He said right there, said, there we go. That's the one I need that wants me, that want to see me do great things, uh, that's not sitting around like they cheat so and so like they cheat Nicodemus and got it all together and can teach this and that and don't know nothing and have not been born again neither transformed as a yet but know all the scriptures and know how to rehearse uh, and know how to so they think judge and just as blind as a bat, amen God is looking for that one to say look Lord we need some help uh, amen, this thing, amen, is over you and unless you do it in us it won't be done. That's what God is looking for in times like these so I'd rather hold to your promises because you don't break no hearts but you come to heal hearts. You don't put people into captivity because you come to let them go free. Amen. You ain't got the message of doom. You came to save that which is lost. And so I'm in here tonight to let men and women know let this echo the airways. The spirit of God is running rampant in this land. Amen. And he wants the church to come up Come up, come up, come up hither. It's time to go higher. It's time to go deeper in God that we can see the things of God. And when you get up on that type of level, you find out it don't look so bad. You come to find out, oh, God got a plan. My God, he's up to something here. Amen. Many times it takes that in a man and woman life. Uh, when you got full of yourself and you think you all that uh, and you walk away from God, God will sit right there and let you walk on. Uh, because at the end of the day, you're all wickedness will correct you. And when you get in the jam, you're going to realize, uh-uh, I left the best thing that I ever had. And because of that, God going to sit right there and say, yeah, he going to get upset with you. He going to stretch his hand out unto you. I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to help you. You got to learn how to pay attention and keep my promises. Uh, not get caught away with false promises, false prophets, uh, and all this news that's not from me. I need your ear to develop. I need your inner man to develop. I need my sheep to know my voice uh, that they don't follow strangers and hold to my promises. He don't have to show us all when he tells us. He didn't, have to show, he didn't show Abraham everything. I mean, he didn't show none of them all that they had to walk it out. Yeah. Amen. They had to walk it out, my God. They had to walk it out, my God, as it was going. And they were going places in God. They had to walk it out. David had to walk it out. That's y'all. That's people get caught up in whatever went on in David's life. You get caught up all you want. David and made it in. Yeah. Amen. I mean, look at here. Samson had to walk it out. Amen. You get out of Samson's lane, let Samson stay in his lane, get in your lane. Now. And you learn how to call on God in your adversity. Hold on to his promises. Realize, and Lord, you didn't start me out like this. Uh, I mean, God, I mean, I done fell off into the ditch uh, and I've been pointing fingers, but it's me, oh Lord. Uh, I'm standing in the need of help. Uh, it's not my mother, not my brother, but not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord. Uh, I mean, my heart has grown dark uh, and I've got away from your promises, but you did promise uh, if we call on you in the day of adversity, if we call Call on you with a sincere heart. You would come again in our life. And what we're learning and what we come to know about God is that our life is spent as a tale or a story that's told. What are you saying, preacher? If you're in God. I mean, everything that's taking place, it was going to take place and you didn't know it, but he did. But he was counting it. He's counting on you and I to have enough relationship, enough uniting with him that you don't murmur, neither will you can that in the midst of what you face, you will say, 
and look lowered. I yet thank you. I yet bless you. Because although I might lose this and lose that, my relationship with you means everything. I still got peace. I still got joy. I still got contentment. And look, yes, it's still relevant. Godliness with contentment is great gain. I mean, when everybody seems like put their mouth on you, when everybody turns their back upon you, you just keep walking before a God, a godly God in godliness. And watch what God do in your behalf. You got to realize I'm not letting go his promises because if I let go his word, I let go him. And when I let go his word, I mean, I lose everything because he did give you all things that pertain to life and godliness. He promised you that because he is everything that you need. So when we look all over there in that, in that ninth year chapter, amen, praise God. When he looked over there, he was seeking to tell him, gain some wisdom how to go through here. You got to learn, amen. You got to learn there's going to be some rocky days. There's going to be some days that's going to, your rock the There's going to be some bumpy days. But whatever days it may be, you got to know without a, a shadow of a doubt that God is with you and he won't forsake you. Sister Tony, keep reading until you get to the 12th verse so we can get out of there and we get ready to bring this home. The days of our years are three score years and ten. Uh -huh. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow. Yes. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. Mm -hmm. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Yes. Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. Look at this. So teach us uh -oh. to... Uh-oh, uh-oh. So teach us. Uh-huh. To uh -huh. remember our days. Yes. That we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. So what Pastor Paul is doing tonight is trying to get some teaching. That we can learn how to focus in on his promises and hold on. Because he says, so teach us how. So teach us how to number our days. Teach us how to realize time is short. Teach us how to not waste time. Teach us how not to get caught up in the wrong way. You teach us, give us wisdom to realize uh, really only what we do for you with lads. Uh, you teach us how to realize all these desires that we have. You don't give us all the desires that we have. Amen. You give us the desires that you want us to have. Those are the ones you bring to pass. Uh, you know that's the scripture that a lot of folks have ran with and a lot of preachers have preached it to us down through the years. He gives you the desires of your heart. Just delight yourself in him. Amen. And here it is because they done said what somebody else said and God have not given them enlightenment. Then you sitting right here and everything you desire, you sit up in there. He told me about delight. Let me go and give him a praise. And what you delight in, he didn't give you that desire. Amen. I mean, you don't realize that desire could have came from another power. Amen. And a lot of us be honest because we done been in some stuff for a long time. If we be honest, a lot of them desires, you know God didn't give them to you. You ain't told nobody. But you trying to make her and make him, that was a desire you had. But when God gives desires of the heart, I mean, and when he put within you to desire and then manifest that, I mean, there that thing go real smooth. What are you saying? The desires that God gives is for your journey. Yes. The desires that God gives. You remember Abraham? Abraham and Sarah came out. God put them together. Abraham came out and he gave them both to desire, son. He said, not this ain't how we're going to do it, though. Because what I'm giving you both to desire, I'm going to use as a statement in the Holy Script. Amen. Isaac is going to play an integral part. This thing, nothing. Y'all don't even know. Amen. With the magnitude of the son. But I'm putting within you. And, you know, we in the hour, people are taught just whatever you want to go for. Reach for the stars. They're not sitting right there saying get before God and let God give it to you make you, you let God do it in your life amen, and so a lot of people are bringing over what they seek and they think they want, and they're bringing things over and say, look Lord, I know it's a mess but bless it, I mean they're sitting up here doing things, oh come over here tonight, but as we look at this he promised, if we get in him, as, as, as Paul was teaching over there, and stay with
with him. Uh, he won't leave us nor forsake us even in rough times. And so what we're preaching on tonight is for you to know your days, number your days, uh, teach us how to number them, Lord, that we don't get sidetracked uh, and caught up with all of this in that, uh, that we can get in the straight and narrow gate, uh, that we don't be tongue speakers and scriptures told us uh, and got evil hearts of unbelief. Uh, teach us how to go through this thing uh, while we're talking about Jesus and we have Jesus in our life. Uh, we don't want to have cobra type spirits uh, and poison type spirits uh, that we don't have love nowhere close to us. Uh, but we do know how to quote scriptures. Don't let us go that route Lord. Uh, but teach us how to number our days uh, that we might apply our hearts uh, unto wisdom. Uh, the Bible lets us know that Christ has been made unto us his people wisdom. Uh, you teach us how to be like you Jesus. Uh, because I don't know about y'all but I'm looking at a whole bunch of stuff uh, and I'm saying Lord my God uh, it's truly not about what you say with your mouth. Uh, it's truly not about how long you say you've been this and that. Uh, but it is about your relationship. Uh, it is about the Christ that's in you. Uh, it's about the fruits that's hanging on your tree. Uh, instead of judging and condemning uh, it's time for men and women to fruit inspect their own tree uh, and see if us in you coming out is Jesus uh, because we want to be wrapped up tangled up in the glory of God uh, and the only way to do this you got to learn to hold to his promises uh, because what God got in his mind uh, he got plans for you uh, I mean God, God got thoughts uh, toward his people and their thoughts of peace uh, not thoughts of evil to give you an expected end. He want to get you to the point that Christ is manifested in your life. And it's going to take afflictions, troubles, and trials. So we got to learn how to do like David said. We got to learn how to praise him in all things. We got to learn how to let the praises of God be continually in our mouth. We got to learn how to keep our mind locked in, stayed upon him as we hold him forth the promises. You might be going Going through and pain might come your way, but you gotta remember, like Jacob did, wrestling all night long and holding on to that angel. Purpose in his heart, I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go. Let me go give you knock my hip out. I got pain going on, but I'm not letting go. I mean, I'm looking for a change. I want God to do something for me. I mean, God sat right there and saw that type of church. And he said, no, -uh, your name is no longer Jacob, but now it is Israel. For as a prince thou hast prevailed, you hung on until changes came in your life. You hung on until you got your your change. And that's what it's all about after you get saved. Hold to these promises because he won't leave you nor forsake you. You can't always want God when you want when you want things. You gotta want God to want to be like him. You gotta want God to want the life of Christ to be exhibited in your life. You gotta want God that your tongue don't be everywhere it shouldn't be. Because everything that thing say that's idle. I mean this is a deadly member that's come that a signature of life of folks to hell because they don't have no control over him. But brother, my God, I get it. I understand why Jesus said it. I forgive them. They don't know what, not, that, what they do. I understand why Philip sitting right there getting stoned and gnawed on and they sitting up here in here killing him and taking him. Amen. They think they're killing him but Stephen was transforming right on up out of here and looked away. He didn't get evil like those that was coming against him. But brother, he sought to give him a word while he was getting ready to get on up out of here. And while they was treating them mean, here come heaven and say, get ready to come on. Yeah, I want y'all to come on because here come one. When you look at him, look how he's standing up for me. Look at the glory that's up on him. And why they think they doing evil, heaven's door is opening on up, waiting upon him. Amen. And but Stephen was preaching the promises of God. He was letting men and women know what God said will come to pass. I mean, it came to pass so that you're doing just what he said you would do. You're doing just like this, your fathers did. God's word is always sure. You want to be not on people's side, but on the word side. Because at the end of the day, that's what lasts. That's why God is calling man to build them up. Build them up 
up upon this rock. I mean, don't build them up on organization, tradition, and custom, but you build them up on what I said. I give them power, preach power then. I made them new creatures, preach that doctrine. I give them life and that more abundantly, preach that. But in order to preach that, you got to get in God and let him give you all the words of this life. And that's what we at in this time we're in. But I'm admonishing people, hold to the promises of God. Don't hold to what folks have come to realize or try to figure out. If God said it, didn't believe it. If you don't see it, hold on to what God said. You let the sick say I'm well. You let the weak say I'm strong. You let men and women talk it just like God see it. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Hold to that promise and walk it out. Because as you walk it out, amen, you will develop. You will grow into be all that he called you to be. Remember the Bible said, to as many as received him, to them gave he power. And that power was to become the sons of God. You got to know right now, you are the sons of God. Although it does not yet appear. I mean, what's in you is great. Great is he that's in you than he that's in the world. I don't have to beat you now because it seems like you don't know who you are yet. I ain't never ran into a kid that knew they was going to be this. I don't believe Sam Walton, the man that ended up doing the Walmart thing. I don't believe when he was a kid he knew he was going to do that. I mean, my God, I don't believe all these ones that end up being having worldly success. I don't believe when they got going on, the man didn't know he was going to be Amazon. The man didn't know he was going to be Mr. Google and all this different stuff. I mean, I can take you to the scriptures when God called disciples. Peter didn't realize he was going to get ready to be an apostle. I mean, James, John didn't know either. Samson, a man, was born a Nazarite unto, unto God. He didn't realize what he was going to be. He had to walk in that thing and grow in his calling. What are you saying? You got to hold to the promises of God and know they all yeah and amen. You got to know God has given you power above all the powers of the enemy. That when the enemy comes back in upon your mind, you know how to fight that devil to the nail and let him know my mind don't belong to you no more because this is what God has given me. He's given me a new mind and you ain't got no right here. So instead of letting you set Ness up, I'm going to bind you and rebuke you because I'm a whole to the promise of God. I got power over you and he demonstrated and so I will let him do it in me. It's time for the people of God to let God arise in your heart and in your life and know that he can change you and make you all over again. You've grown up in God and developed in this relationship, this marriage, this union that God himself had did. You did do it, he did it. You didn't find him. He wasn't lost. You was lost. He found you. My God, man, that's his problem. He tries to do things, and I found out everything you try and do, you make a mess of it. But when you let the Lord do it, you ain't got to pretend or act. It just is what it is. I mean, when you let the Lord do it, anybody that's shown up say, and been delivered, They'll tell you in a minute, I didn't change myself. Amen. I didn't even deliver myself. So I didn't knock that person out of my life. I just, right. I didn't stop it. I tried to stop it, couldn't stop it. Amen. He came in my life Amen. and did an operation upon me. That same God, he stands ready to do it for all those that long for him. Amen. But you got to call say, Lord, I've been trusting in the wrong promises. Everything I've been banking in has let me down. I don't want to put my trust in government. I don't want to put my trust in the arm of flesh that help me to lean only upon you. That you can lift me up before where I've fallen. Out of this muck and miry clay. Out of the ditch I've slipped down in. Lord, lift me up. Turn me on because I can do nothing without you. It was Jesus that said, without me, you can't do nothing. You can't do anything that will Please God, if, 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 I, if I'm not the one doing it in you, you cannot do it. It makes no different what you call yourself. It makes no different how you try to mimic. I've always told people this when the Lord began to enlighten me in regards to a lot of area that we're going to 
going to let down in and it's going to be truth to deliver many. Yes, right in Zion. And even when others, amen, are sitting around talking about, look at the rate that goes on in Christendom and all the failed marriages and all this and that. Look here. You ain't throwing no shade on God. All that is a sample of if what you call it, it wasn't. Because what in God is what's successful. And there ain't for nobody that's full of lust and trying to go through things because you're going to keep on having no success. What God want man to know, unless I call you, unless I make you to be what you are, you can't do what the next would do if he ain't giving you to do it. And if you don't believe that the promise was to Israel, as they were coming through the Red Sea, the Bible said, by faith, they passed through the Red Sea. And here come the Egyptians led by that Pharaoh, the horse and his ride and all his chariots. They're going to try to imitate and do what somebody else did. And they didn't have no good success. And they got up in that thing because he didn't call them to come through there. And therefore they was overturned and conquered by the Red Sea. And I'm telling you something here is going on. I don't care how many people are acting like it's not. I mean God is watching man's relationships. I said Lord I see what you're saying because the promises that men are standing on are not yours. But when we stand on your promises, it gives you the opportunity to be God in our lives. God in the man life. God in the woman life. God in the child's life. God in your son and daughter's life. When we give them the promises of God, which are all yea and amen. But when we try to take up on ourselves and do what only God can do. He is the one that institutionalized this salvation and he is the one that institutionalized marriage and you can't do none of them. It take God to do it in your life and if you try, you try to live safe without him doing it and tell me how much success you're going to have. I mean it takes God to help us on a day to day basis. God got to put it in you. He got to give you an obedient spirit when you had a disobedient spirit. He got to give you love when you ain't had no love for him. You can't do this thing in yourself. Man has been taught because of all these doctrines of devils. And we got full of ourselves. And the preachers have made themselves like their God. But all we are are messengers. All we are are servants of the Most High God. Even when we conduct in what we call holy matrimonies. All you doing is conducting a ceremony. Because if God ain't put that together. If God has not joined them, just because you bless something don't mean it's blessed. Just because you curse something don't mean it's cursed. I mean, it takes God. But when God is in this thing, we find out that all of it is going to be successful because he is the God that orchestrates our lives. And that's what we're preaching tonight. Look, God is encouraging you. Hold to his promises. Because when you hold to his unchanging hand, when you hold to his promises, he bring you out. He bring you through and take you into a place you haven't been before. And the next thing you know, you say, Lord, it's been a long time coming, but thank God I'm here. Amen. My God, you sit right there and say, Lord, I long for this. But as you went your way, you found out. Oh, my God. Not this. He said, go this way. Not that. I mean, go back this way. I mean, God got a way of bringing us out in such a way into a plain path that he can use us for his glory. Because at the end of the day, this thing is all about the will of God. And what we want to find ourselves doing is holding to his word, which is the plan he has for you and I. Sister Tony, I last read a verse over there in Jeremiah 29. I want to say this, that hearts of men and women be encouraged. Amen. Look here, God spoke through the prophet way back then, and he's speaking today. Because you might not realize what you face in all the chaos. Sometimes we want God to show us, and when he show us, we want God to fix it. And we done did it over and over again. And the Lord said, every time I show it to you, you don't do right. When I show you trouble, call out, ask for me, help you. I deliver you, I bring you out. What God does, he saves your soul. He don't change folks for you. And he's not saving folks for you. 
You will lose your life and everything God has planned for you messing around over there in them type of pastures. Amen. God is a type of God, his spirit. If you don't want him, he don't want you. Amen. And he ain't going to know put nobody in no messed up situation like that. But you and I can. We'll put ourselves there. But if you call on God, he got ways of delivering you that you can go on in peace and go on in joy. When we look at this in Jeremiah 29 and 10, what did the Bible say? For thus said the Lord. For thus said Jeremiah. The Lord. For thus said, I mean all the prophets. For thus said the Lord. Uh -huh. Come on. That after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you. Uh -huh. And perform my good word toward you. All right. In causing you to return to this place. This is a promise. Mm -hmm. Now, what God had enough wisdom to know, I got to do some things and work some things out of you. You've been stiff that hard head and you did some things, but your calamity, you're going to call out unto me. I mean, I'm going to let what the enemy is going to mean for your evil. I'm going to turn it around for your good. Amen. So what he said after, after seven years, not before it, after That's seven years. Saying. This sounds like a plan to me. Hey. Amen. It sounds like a promise to me after yeah. 70 years have been accomplished in Babylon. I don't know about you. I can take this and look at my own life because I got saved at 22 years old. After them 21 years, after that, amen, I'm going to come in because you're going to call on me and then I'm going to take you on to your purpose. Somebody say amen. amen. Accomplished after being accomplished in Babylon, I'm going to visit you. Keep on going in verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. I know the Lord. thoughts. Yes. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. Uh -huh. To give you an expected end. Yes. I know the thoughts that I think toward mm -hmm. you. Thank you, Lord. God help us to be delivered. From not worrying about what everybody think about us. How to please everybody if I make a move this way. If I do this. I know the thoughts. Oh my God. I know the thoughts that I think toward you said the Lord. I'm going to do some things that everybody that's not in me. That I'm not letting them see. That thing that I got to, to concerning you. That's my plan. It's not their plan. It's my plan. That's why the world, our children, are in the condition they're in with this social media. They too concerned about how our other folks think and what they got to say. And that thing got trickled down into the churches and trickled down in adult lives. They live their lives out of the lenses of other people. They're not concerned about how God see and what God got to say about it. We got real soft skin. Amen. We moved and wear our emotions in so many different ways. But God said, no, -uh, that's why I got you going through this way of Babylon because after this get through, after that devil get through walking up the front of you and down the back of you, you're going to know how to hold to my promises and want me. Amen. But he was letting them know, look at, I know the thoughts that I'm thinking towards you. It's for you to realize God got thoughts of peace. They ain't evil. It makes no difference who coming to your life trying to prophesy a lie. Prophet lying. Amen. And all these old false prophets speaking things. Look, God will look at a worse situation speaking to your life and say you coming out. Amen. After that 70 years of abundance, look at I got some things for you that you're going to do. That others that ain't even being just looking at you talking about, uh, uh. I'm going to bring them in and you're going to surpass them. Amen. I'm going to bring them in and you're going to declare because I'm going to declare it through you. And see, what we got to get caught up on is wanting to know God thoughts. We want to know his thoughts. God, help me to go somewhere where I can get the thoughts that you think towards me. If I know I'm messed up and I need a fix and I mean that I'm in a place and I need help, then God, let me hear from you because I need you into my life. And God was telling Jeremiah, you tell that rebellious people. You tell those people that's on their way into captivity. Amen. You let them know that they strong self. Yes, you're going into Babylon 70 years because you wouldn't hear. You're going into bondage and you're going into taskmasters. It sounds like a lot of us. It says a lot of things we have experienced because we just wouldn't hear. That mama, that daddy said, I don't know if you should mess with him. Don't mess with her, but you did it anyway. Amen. And my God, they made your life a, 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 just a wretch. Amen. And bought nothing but chaos and misery. But God said, that's all right because they're chosen. Amen. I'm not going to let them be destroyed. They're going to be too things happen, but I'm not going to let it be all over. I'm coming.
coming again because that one's going to call on me. That one's going to want me back again. They're going to remember what I promised. Don't you know for 70 years to go back, at the end of 70, somebody had to be holding to the promise. Somebody had to realize, wait, he said after 70, it's time to be delivered. And I'm coming today. I ain't got so many years to tell you this year and that year, but I am here to tell you it's time to be delivered. It's time, amen, that we wrapped up in his promise because he knows the thoughts and their thoughts of peace and not evil. He don't come to destroy you and that's what God wants the church to start representing. Amen. Look, if you get away with all this destroying message, you get away with all this condemning and judging and you get in your lane and let God be the judge before you miss this ship yourself. You want to make sure you're light enough to get on the chariot. Amen. And it's too much backbiting, evil speaking, jesting, and foolish talking that's going on amongst God's people. But God said, nah, uh, that wasn't the promise that I told you. Because Israel didn't look for the promise. Because they didn't crave the promise. They found themselves murmuring and complaining. But I'm reminded by the Holy Ghost that God promised a land. But they forgot the promise. They got caught up looking at their present circumstances. They got caught up in what they're going to eat. They got caught up in what we're going to wear. They got caught up in how we're going to fight. And they forgot the God that brought them out of the land of Egypt was the same God that would provide. But he wanted them to get to know him. And that's why I'm telling you, no put down to nobody. It's time to get to know the Lord. Don't tell me I've been in the church for 40 years. That don't mean nothing. Because I've seen folks in the church for 40 years and still babes. I've seen folks stand to church for 30 years and still not at a place in God. But at the end of the day, it's about do you have your eye on the prize? It's about are you developing and making your way towards? Are you in the land? What will he promise? And in this hour that we in, if you're not in Jesus, you ain't in that land. If you're not in love, meekness, and kindness, gentleness, you're not in that land. You're not in the promise. You got to hold to the promise. Cleave this word. Keep it before you that you might receive the end of your salvation. I don't know about you, but I didn't come this far to be lost. I didn't come this far to end up in the burning lake of fire. I come that I might see those that have went before me. Number one, I gotta see Jesus. So I gotta hold on to the promise. But there's my mother and there is my father. My God, when I seen them press to get through, when I seen them take by force and have to be finding to get there, going through crude mockery, going through being betrayed, going through being treated evil, but didn't say a ugly word, but kept on shining a beacon of light, kept love in their heart. I realize I got to hold on to these promises because if we hold on strong, we're going to make it in. And that's what the people did when they got into the promised land. Them young ones got in the land. And I don't know about you, praise the Lord, but I want to walk around in Jesus. I want to grow up in Jesus that I can get into the heaven's gate because at the end of the day, his spirit got to become my spirit. His heart got to become my heart. His mind got to be my mind. And I don't know about you, I long to hear, well done, that good and faithful servant. I need you purposed in your heart. If you don't, we know you can't. If you don't heal me, you're still a healer. If you don't bring the miracle, I know you're a miracle worker because you have a plan. And my plan might not be like everybody else. Amen. But I want to be locked up in my plan. I want to fulfill the plan you have for me. And that's how we got to be in this hour. Somebody say amen. Oh, come on. Let's give God a great big hand praise. I'm done. He promised. He promised. The Lord said in Hebrew 13, I'll never leave you. I won't forsake you. Don't worry about the mockery. Don't worry about being hated without a cause. Don't worry about folks lying on you. Don't worry about how harshly you're treated. I went through all of that. You got to be like me. If I went through it, you got to come through it. 
But I set an example in the path. If you come through it, you get where I'm at. Amen. I don't know about you. He's on the right hand. I want to be there. Amen. I want to be there in heaven's gate. I'm away with this stuff, folks. That all this heaven is just uh, ideal. Heaven ain't no ideal. Amen. Heaven is real. That's a place that we all, amen, if you live right, those that live godly, if you live right, you get that. Because as sure as heaven is real, hell is too. Amen. Praise God. And it's not the will of God that no man end up there. He didn't create that for man. Amen. He created it for the devil and his angels. Yes. So that means we have a job to be accountable for as preachers. To preach the promises of God. That you build your life upon it. And develop a personal relationship. I know we're saying some things that's heavy. But you stay in there. And realize something here. I would rather be honest with God than to live a hypocritical life on this earth. That's it. That's right. yeah. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. Yeah. This is what God is bringing his people to. You hold these promises, it's going to take you to places you ain't been before. As we rest up on our feet. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless the Lord. Lord, we thank you. That's right. And I'm going to pray for us and those that are in there that's tuned in that this message may have helped in coming to the life of men and women tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we have stood before this great people to speak into their lives by your spirit, I pray, God, that the promises of you that we teach, declare, and preach be a living word in my mouth as it enters into the lives of men and women. Yes. Bringing them into the place of what your mission was all about. You come to set at liberty them that have been bruised. There's so many that's been disappointed, disappointed, Lord, because they're trusting and have trusted a long time in the wrong thing. Yes. Not realizing who you are. Not having clarity about what you called them unto in their life. You help men and women to see with clarity that they can boldly walk it out and walk in faith. Going to the places that you have for them. Too long there's been so many living in oppression. Faking joy. Oh, God, the relationships are not right with you. They're not right with the, with men, not right with women. And they don't realize you ain't even there to judge. You better help. Yes. But, Lord, in this hour that we be in, let there be such a great boldness that would rest upon men and women that is standing for you, that they can preach the union that you have, that men and women will see that union and then also be able to take that and examine the lives of those as in entanglements. Yes. We know you come that men might have life and that more abundantly. You come to use your church that your glory might be revealed. Then you help us to hold fast to these promises that you would work it all out in our lives that we can be a witness and tell the truth of what you have done and what you have not done. You ain't never did nobody no wrong. If there's any wrong that's been done, we made the decision to do it. But everything about you is right. Everything that you have instituted is a joy and a blessing. Salvation, these relationships, marriages, ain't no fault in you. We ain't no failure in you, Lord. It's you that it, you inspire us, you enlighten us, you lift us. Yes. Then you help those, oh God, that's coming in churches, pretending to have joy and going home and in a state of oppression. Going home and the house is full of chaos. Going home and this one go that way and the next one go the other way. Lord, let a word come through and shake your people loose like never before. That your name can be glorified in this earth. That you can be magnified among the people like never before. Deliver men and women from these silence. In the name of Jesus, let the yoke of bondage be destroyed. And let them take up on your yoke, for your yoke is easy. 
and your bird in his light. Yes. These things we pray and ask in Jesus' name. And all of God's people say amen. amen. Let's put our hands together with a victory clap. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name. Bless your name. Thoughts of peace. He has for you. Thoughts of peace. Don't you water with it. Amen. When you realize you made a bad decision, made a bad mistake, then you get up, you get out of there and live your life. Amen. Don't you wonder in it. Amen. Move on in Jesus' name. Amen. How uh, this type tonight will just go on and be dismissed. Amen. That the Lord see you back home to your destination safely. Amen. We're dismissed. God bless you.